There are several young candidates vying for public office in this election cycle, but if elected, 20-year-old Ben Sandlin would be the youngest ever to serve in the Florida House. Right. To tell us why he's making the run, Ben joins us now. Welcome. Hey, thank you for having me. Thank you. Glad to have you here. So what sparked your interest in politics? Um, honestly, it all started when I went to when I started at UCF last last fall. Um, I got involved with uh, the the school's chapter of March for Our Lives, and um, I got into organizing. And uh, we, uh, in my first week of uh, being with them, I traveled to Tallahassee to, to uh, lobby against or to testify against uh, uh, HB nine nine nine, which uh, is a permitless carry bill. And remind us, then, but it, March for Our Lives—that's an anti-gun or kind uh, of a gun control. Yeah, advocating for uh, gun safety laws. Yeah. Okay. And so the bill you were speaking on was a bill that would have uh, restricted permitless gun carry? No, it would have, um, it would have, uh, like, it would have allowed it. Perm uh, so people can uh, um, carry around, uh, have more license to carry around fire alarms, firearms without a permit. And I was there to testify against that as um, uh, as a young person growing up in, in, in the state. Um, it, it just uh, five years after uh, the anniversary of uh, the Parkland shooting, and um, we, I, I got involved that way, and that sparked into me getting more into uh, organizing on, on campus. And uh, yeah, I, I ended up being the co-director for a little bit. And uh, but uh, since I've left UCF, I'm uh, I'm back home. And uh, that's and you're at UNF now. Yes. Okay. Yes, I am. So you're seeking the District 12 seat, and you're challenging the incumbent Wyman Duggan. Mm -hmm. He's a Republican. You're running as a Democrat. I sure am. Um, so this is a district that runs basically from the South Bank along the east side of the St. John's River all the way down to the county line and then also kind of hops over the river in, to include NAS Jackson, a little bit of the west side. Mm. Um, why are you cha why are you challenging him in particular? Because um, I live in his district and I, I, I have very vast uh, disagreements with him on sub uh, very substantial policy issues. He's um, been a huge backer of of the governor's anti LGBTQ laws, like don't say gay, which just got struck down, and uh, uh, he backed the permitless carry bill, which I opposed. And he, uh, the Sierra Club, um, has uh, made several policy proposals to help protect our environment. And we have a huge, beautiful river running through our district. It's literally in the middle of our district, and he's uh, voted against every policy position that they've uh, proposed. And um, uh, I want to. I want. I. I just. I. I don't feel like that's right for our district. I don't feel like that's right for our state. And I want to be a be a voice um, uh, for protecting our climate, uh, among other things. So we should note that Wyman Duggan will appear on First Coast Connect on Monday, August twelfth. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself. You said you're Jacksonville native. You went to Douglas Anderson, mm -hmm. studied musical theater. Yes. Yeah. Um, and. What is it that you are currently studying? What is your area of interest in your future? Um, I'm studying physics at the University of North Florida, and um, it's a lot of fun. It's very interesting. Um, it it wasn't previously my forte. Um, I, I I studied political science at UCF, but um, uh, I, I was pretty engaged in political stuff already, and uh, I was I'm, I'm a very I follow politics very closely, so I wanted to switch over to something that's a little more challenging, and it and it certainly is challenging. Um, but um, I have a research position, an assistant research position at uh, UNF um, as uh, at, we're doing this uh, lab on uh, uh, how students answer questions, um, answer math problems where they're looking when they're analyzing what to gauge when they're answering questions. And, I, if, and I'd like to end up doing something like that, something in the re research side of things. What do you think it would be like in the Florida House if you were elected? Um, it, the odds would certainly be against me. Um, we have a super, the Republicans have a super majority now, and I, I, I doubt that wouldn't be the case upon, uh, taking office, but, um, you know, I, I will certainly have friends there, um, if, if I'm elected. Um, but mostly I, I just be excited to, um, to, to get to work. Uh, I, any, any, uh, I wouldn't be dissuaded at all by, uh, if, if we are uh, as as outnumbered as we are now, I wouldn't be dismayed by that at all um, because I I would have friends and I and I do have, I do have a, a drive to 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 do better however I can if that means if that means working with whoever I can to make change happen, and I, I and also just 
it, it the idea of what which a lot of people don't talk about is like the clerical side of things like connecting people with services that they need like you like hey i i i uh like there was a storm i i i don't i don't know uh if i need to evacuate or or i need this trash picked up can you help me at all and it's and uh connecting people with the services they need depending on their situation that that excites me and i i like service excites me and i and um so i'm i'm not at all shy about it i'm not uh i'm not i i, I don't intend to uh be uh you know i have my mood dampened by um anything i may encounter because really I, it's it, service excites me and if i'm elected I'd, I'd be ready to get to work on day one so it's a combative environment in the house mm. particularly um how are you at compromise how are you at working with people that you really disagree with pretty good um I, I, at ucf um i was in student government uh for a little bit and it was uh you know we didn't agree on everything there were people who had vast disagreements and we needed to and and i and i have experienced in that regard albeit at a much low cal lower caliber setting but like i have i've experienced working um with people that disagree with me and and finding common ground uh common ground with people um um and but i and i don't i don't think that that'd be particularly the hardest part of the job what happens if you were elected would you continue going to school yeah i mean i i don't i don't see why not uh uh ana eskamani who i've had the pleasure of working with um in the past uh, she's she just, a state representative state representative yeah she just got her phd and um yeah and uh, i i commend her uh, greatly but um she just she's just uh, just is just another example of her showing other people what's possible yeah so you'd be continuing to go to school at unf and then what commuting to tallahassee or how yeah. would that work i mean for the legislative session it would be pretty tricky um but um there there's also the the chance to do you know like uh online courses if need be and uh, because we we're, we're in the modern age we have technology we can do that um but yeah i i i don't i don't i can't imagine it getting away too much if it did if you know i'm 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 fully willing to say if it did i probably would take that into consideration um uh, the next election cycle but um i don't i don't foresee that being a a problem we did get an email from ross um he says that with little real world experience being financially independent, getting married, having kids, making mortgage payments. Um, what would you have to offer uh, in that role? And he also says that you have a practice of cynical tweets. Uh, he thinks you'd be more effective as a performative politician rather than an effective legislature, okay. le legislator. So your response. Um, I, in regards to my, you know, lack experience or lack thereof, it, it's, it, I, I don't, find that relevant i mean there's a lot of you have a lot of representation of that in the house already what? oh uh and I, I i don't think that'll be a hindrance at all and and in in terms of my uh cynical tweets i'm i'm very opinionated and i don't i don't hide from that and i i don't i i maybe i don't like fit the model for like a typical politician but like that's you know when like what do you want me to do just be a different person i'm i'm, I'm i am who i am and i I believe what I believe, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna hide from that. No. So, what are the policies that you tweet about, or that you are passionate about? Um. Now that it, I think about, I I just I have very adamant beliefs that you know we need police accountability, and um, that that can be controversial in Florida, but you know I I don't. What does that mean to you? Accountability. Accountability. That, uh, for example, um, there was a, a bill that pla that pa that passed the Florida legislature that um, uh, that was proposed and uh, helped uh, to be passed by my opponent um, that would uh, eliminate the right of municipalities to um, form like civilian review boards um, uh, for like for like civilian overview of like police um, actions. And I just I I I don't think. That's right, because I I just think you know we everyone makes mistakes, no less um the people that um uh, that wear a badge, and um they they need I believe they need a force just like anyone else to be held accountable, and um unfortunately that's very controversial, but um I I just and with everything we see going on like uh, what just happened with Sonia Massey um if that's if, the woman who was killed by an officer yes, in Illinois yes um. It, 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 I, I I'm vastly troubled by how much we've been dismayed from the thought that we can do better 
um, that uh, we can do right by our citizens and do a better job of keeping people safe, um, especially like there there were so many oversights in that case. Like the, the, the officer that killed her should never have been given a badge, period, period. And uh, the fact that uh, we've had so many arrests within JSO just this past year, um, it shows that uh, uh, that obviously like the people that are signing up for this dangerous job um, that they they obviously they're still human and they need and they make mistakes and they need to be um, held accountable when they when they breach the public trust. I want to ask you a little bit about campaign finance mm. because your opponent has raised personally over a hundred thousand dollars. But he also has a political action committee mm -hmm. that he has access to that has about half a million dollars remaining. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it had about a million dollars raised. You've got, I think, maybe a little over a thousand dollars remaining mm -hmm. in your account, um, have, having raised about three thousand. So mm -hmm. a little bit of a David Goliath yeah, circumstance sure. there on, on the money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, um, fundraising is difficult, and especially when uh, you're a student and you're um uh work in two jobs uh it's it can it can be difficult um but i've res I, I i'm just taking every opportunity i can get and taking nothing for granted and um i believe uh the use the resources i have been granted i've um done well with them and um if if anyone would like to help me correct that error feel free by, by donating you mean yeah okay. <laughs> why not we've got a call from cynthia in ortega go ahead cynthia um I happen to know Ben's mother, grandmother, and his um, grandfather, and his. I want to know. I want you to know that he's grown up in a very fine family. Jack Gayard, his grandfather, contributed so much during his lifetime to the Jacksonville community and service. And I am. I just applaud Ben for this. What I would say is a courageous stand to run for the legislature, and I hope that he wins. But I would love to help him in any way I can. I really got a supporter out there, Ben. Your thoughts? Um, I'm sorry. She brought up. Um, she brought up my grandfather. My he passed this year. He was he was a great man. He was a great he was a great man, and I um. I, I, he, he made me who I am today. And it's true. He gave his, he, he dedicated a lot of his life to service for this community. And well, whatever happens, I just, I just want to, uh, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, but I just want to, no, that's okay. I just, I just want to make sure I'm, I carry on his legacy, man, because he, man, what a, what a guy. Well, I, uh, our condolences for your grandfather. He sounds like a great man. Um, in terms of the rest of the the couple weeks that remain, uh, well, actually, you're you're not until November, and so you've That's got right. a little time. Yeah. Um, you're going to uh, continue to campaign. I guess we'll continue to hear from you, um, oh, yeah. Ben Sandlin, uh, looking to be the youngest elected member of the Florida House. Thanks so much for being here today. Thank you for having me.